Are you supporting this? Are you supporting that? How much more are you going to support any idea, dear humanity? Because ultimately, whatever you would support, you support that because you identify with it. And there is this little voice within you that says, if you support that, you're probably gonna do a change in the world. But are you sure that the voice telling you this is actually the voice of your intuition? Or is it nothing else but, you know, a voice of separation? Because we all know that separation exists. And in order to create any war, one needs to create at least two sides. What cancer means from a spiritual standpoint is when at least one part of you, irrespective of how small or big, decides to turn against you. This is again the same with the idea of physical cancer. But people also live in mental cancer and emotional cancer because they are doing things that they despise and certain parts of them will simply remind them that that is not good. Your emotions are valuable. They are the most important part within you because they are a guidance system. So an aspect of life is if you disregard your emotions and well how you feel technically, that is basically fighting against who you are. So ultimately it is a kind of war. And war is basically cancer. Why do you think we humans, for the fact that we're constantly wearing one against the other on this planet, are viewed as a cancer? Well, technically this is imbued into our heads by different propagandas through movies and video games where the antagonists say that, you know, humanity is something bad and we are always uh, a plague and the such. Only our ignorance is the such, and the fact that we are giving it too much power. We are giving too much power to this idea of existing in a constant struggle, existing in a fight. When you support something, you obviously place yourself against anything else based on how fanatical you are towards that idea. So, fanaticism and its levels mean that the more imbibed you are with something, the more of an enemy the others are, if they do not align with your points. So it's not that you just accept a certain idea, you also want it imposed on everyone else. Is this the way for a better existence? Well, imposing things on others is always part of conquest. And conquest is the male aspect of Mm, expanding your borders. There is also the feminine aspect, which disregards conquest, and it is not called inclusion for nothing. Accepting others for what they are is the way, because how much longer will your humanity simply accept your pains to take the best of you? Because nowadays, we have so many groups supporting things and ideas, but they do it in fanatical ways, which is very detrimental to them as well. Because when you believe something so much, it becomes greater than who you are. And it means you simply do not live your life. You allow someone else to live your life. Because you allow your pain to take the best of you. We live in a world where literally everything counts as a label what your gender is, what your orientations are in life. It doesn't necessarily mean to be sexually necessarily, but your orientations, political ones, sexual ones, everything is used as a label. This is only done in ignorance, because ignorance means separation. People, you are too invested in this aspect of separation, of I believe in this and you don't, therefore you are the enemy. We all eat the same things, more or less. We are all we all are biological. We all have the same physiological needs. And while we fight for these things, there are things that apparently support us. But in life, everything is a transaction. But a transaction means that your gain is my loss, and my loss or my gain is your loss, right? This is how any contract goes. If I win some money, I get more money, right? If I win some money, from the limited amount of money, I get some. So the more I get, the less the others have. So my win is always going to be at least a bit to the detriment of others. So if I was, 
well, if anyone is conscious, okay, the point is they would do things to counteract, right, to balance that, because by taking more wealth, you simply let others become poorer, but you can do things to make sure that they can also enjoy wealth. So the point is, spending the money that you get and not simply keeping it is one way to preserve a so-called economy, but to preserve the well-being of the others. Because personal well-being will always be to the detriment of collective well-being. How much longer will you allow your pains to simply take the best of you? Because in life you have a decision to make for every situation. Do you choose to become wiser or do you choose to stay hurt? Because if you choose to stay hurt, well, hurt is going to feel like pain, right? Hurt pains, right? And pain hurts because, well, they are perfect synonyms. And if one chooses to live in pain, they will gladly accept any distraction. Just like people who have headaches or whatever aches in their body will gladly take a pill. But a pill is nothing else than a distraction. It is not a solution to your problem, just like distractions are no solution to your problem either. A medicine will kill the pain, but not a problem. It just numbs your body down so that it is no longer aware of the pain. You are no longer aware of the pain, and you can simply go on. When society pits you with people that have the same uh, pain, the same hurts like you, you will feel an ease, you will feel like wanting to collaborate with those. But you do not realize that in a society where people are innocents, well, sheep are also innocents. But unfortunately, in this society, sheep only have one single direction, and that is to the slaughterhouse. Is this what you choose? Because ultimately, the point is, separation is the greatest illusion. In a world where we are 8 billion people, right? Many say 8 billion, though I doubt anyone has ever counted all of us, and I'm sure we're less than this, but everything must be portrayed as doom and gloom. We are destroying the planet, we are doing environmental damage. It's not that the planet changes its environment every now and then. Science also supported that there were around 84 changes, right? In between extreme cold and extreme heat. Ch the planet is fully alive. And 84 is a highly spiritual number. It is a number that represents the end of the cycle of a human's life. If one lives 84 years, their life cycle is theoretically over. They have transcended certain limitations of the physical. Then, whatever more they live, well, it's up to them and how they keep their physical body. But 84 is a very powerful number. And this planet is alive. It will change its climate. It doesn't care whether we agree to it or not, whether we struggle to do things or we just struggle to understand things, because this is how the world is. People are trying to understand things, but they are failing to understand who they are, and therefore they are failing to understand the needs of others. Everyone wants to do good to the planet, but everyone has utterly failed, because the good they are wanting to do is an enforcement. When you enforce something, you always end up in a tragedy. You always end up in horrible things. Horrible things have happened in humanity because people have imposed them. When you want to be the do-gooder of the planet, you're always going to create separation. Because through separation you can rule the ignorance. In a society that calls itself a democracy, why do we have leaders? Because leaders are required when there is ignorance. When there is no ignorance, there, are no need, there is no need for leaders. Because in a true democratia, right? Democratia, as it should be called, right? Democratos, the power of the people. If people are aware, they will know what to do. And this is technically the greatest fear of this state, right? This police state that is trying to reinforce itself. Reinforcing something which is dead simply does no good. It's like someone has to die, but you're still hurting them. You're keeping them tied to the machines in a hospital because you want them to see a life for more. But that is abuse. You're technically abusing their pure body. If that life force has to leave, just let it leave because you're creating so much karma for you and that person. Karma that you and that person will have to deal with it. But that person has to deal with it in other lives. 
and so therefore you are to the detriment of anyone if you want to impose things upon them. When you want to impose things on others, you are creating separation, you are fighting for something. And a wise quote once said, instead of fighting for that, well, which you would like, why not simply support it? By supporting it, you simply show compassion, you show yourself as an authentic example, and therefore you will trigger this in people, because everyone wants to feel authentic, but they are too imbibed with shame and guilt, because this is how you are being ruled in this world. Shame and guilt if you do not follow the mainstream. But what is the mainstream? It is ultimately a stream. It is a stream of attention. It takes attention, therefore energy, from people to feed itself. So therefore, it is nothing else than a vampire. Constantly feeding a vampire doesn't make you healthier, doesn't make you feel better, doesn't make you feel true to who you are. The same in a society. Everything that has to appear nowadays has to be imposed, right? And when something is imposed, you either accept it or you fight against it. When you accept something imposed under the guise of security, right? You sacrifice your freedom. And they who sacrifice freedom for security deserve neither. Never forget this quote. In this world, people are trying to give up their freedom for security. But don't forget, they who sacrifice freedom for security deserve neither. All this being said, you are appreciated. Take care. Ferenjan Board signing out.